All right, we might get started. Uh, hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us on this Stand By What You Sell webinar today. My name is Hayley Clifford, and I'll be your facilitator for this session. Today's webinar is especially for dairy producers. We're taking a deep dive into the elements of Australia's red meat integrity system to provide you with practical tips so you can stand by what you sell. The webinar is hosted by Integrity Systems Company with support in Tasmania from Dairy Tas and the Department of Natural Resources and Environment Tasmania. So I'd like to start by introducing the panel on today's session. Our main presenter today is Joe Ganjemi. Joe is Communications Officer with ISC based at Biggin in Queensland. Joe has a long history in extension, having previously worked with DAF Queensland in beef extension in central and northern Queensland. We also have the Department of Natural Resources and Environment Tasmania team online today. Presenting, we have Andrea Nichols and Jim Bett from Biosecurity Tasmania. We also have Mazzino Amuno online to answer your questions from the team as well. And we also have Jackie from Dairy Taz online to answer any specific questions you may have while we're moving along today. Uh, a few housekeeping items before we get going. So we're running today's session as a webinar. So this means your microphones are on mute and your cameras are off, but we do want to be very interactive. So we welcome any questions you might have as we go through today's session. If you move your cursor to the bottom of your screen, you will see there is a Q&A button or it may be at the top of your screen if you are on an iPad. Just click or tap on that and type your questions in there. We have many people on the call today to answer any questions you may have. And just to reinforce, I'll be taking questions we can all learn from, not statements. Today's session will be recorded and we will organise access to the recording and some resources after the webinar for you. If something goes wrong and you can't see or hear us anymore, we will close the meeting and send you a new invite and pick up where we left off. We also have a short evaluation link at the end of this presentation for you so we can get your feedback on this session. So on that note, I'll hand over to Joe to start the presentation. Thanks, Joe. Hi, Haley, and hello, everyone. Now, the first fail of technology is that the slides are not progressing, so that is rather frustrating. Um, any suggestions, Haley? Can you click through them? They're not working. Hmm. They were. Oh, here we go. Righto. Okay, take two. Let's start again. Hi, I'm Joe Ganjemi. I'm um, coming to you today from sunny Roma in Queensland, where I am at the um, attending the Meat and Livestock Australia MSA Eating Quality Awards, but I'm happily sitting in my hotel room to present the webinar today. Um, and thank you for everyone who's come along. Um, I'm sure the weather might be quite different down there in Tasmania, but um, hopefully it's a sunny day down there as well. So today we're going to cover quite a few topics and um, it is going to be quite detailed. We have tried to make sure that it's as clear and simple as possible, but we are going to be covering a lot of content. So I would really encourage you to utilize the materials that you're sent after the webinar to sort of go back through and, and really make sure you've, you've got a handle on what we've been talking about today. But some of the things that we are going to cover is the importance of the red meat integrity system. So that, that might be a sort of a new kind of terminology that you're not familiar with. So we'll talk about who integrity system company is um, and what we do. We'll also be talking about how we interact with the T Tasmanian government and um, other authorities to help deliver um, the integrity system. A big part of that is talking about property identification codes because that is the sort of the first starting point for all integrity interactions with what we do and then we'll cover off on a few of the programs that we manage which includes my MLA, the Livestock Production Assurance Program or LPA and the National Livestock System or NLIS. We'll also talk about the national vendor declarations that are an integral part of those programs and then we'll um, run through some other resources and contacts that we have for you. Um, before I um, hand over, uh, sorry, before I progress through the slides, I just wanted to quickly hand over to Jackie because um, she has done a fantastic job of getting this webinar off the ground. So um, obviously we, we understand that the industry that you guys operate in is unique and it's a bit of a different part of the LPA and NLIS program. So we really wanted to like tailor what we're talking about so that 
it's really relevant and specific to you and Jackie was very keen that we were able to present things that present our information in a way that's going to really resonate with you guys so I hope we've hit the mark um, we have had the last two years obviously when COVID's been on we have run multiple um, webinars and we've had a couple of um, Tasmanian focus webinars but they really did not have a dairy focus so I'm really happy that we've been able to do this because it was a bit of a gap in our resources so yeah, I'd like to thank Jackie very very much um, for getting this off the ground and I'll just um, get Jackie to just um, say a few words. You might just have to take yourself off mute Jackie. Hi everyone, thank you Joe, for that welcome um, and welcome everybody along today that's participated. This was initiated as Joe said um, through us through Dairy Taz um, and that was because of some discussions through the Dairy Women's Network that we have down here so and because a lot of the women end up doing the, the paperwork and and when the audit happens, there's often a lot of questions and a lot of stress in on the farm. So we wanted to address some of those issues. If there is an audit, what we can do. Um, as Joe also touched on, this is a very, very, very complex topic. And what we thought was going to be covered off in one webinar most likely will be covered off in several. So if you can just hang in there, people don't, I oh know there's a lot of information. There will be some polls that will be conducted throughout the webinar, as has been already discussed. So please participate in those. And at the conclusion of the webinar, there's also an opportunity for you to put your hand up and, and say uh, and vote for some further training modules and some topics that we might need to cover off to help, um, help cover some of those gaps. So I'd really um, encourage you to try and be engaged with this process as we work through the webinar. We've, we've got an hour and a half planned um, and that's the maximum time it will be. But please make sure you put your questions in the, in the box where you can on, on your screen and um, reach out if you need some, some help. That's what, what this is all about. Thanks very much, Jackie. So, uh... Again, it's frozen. Let me just see. There must be some secret to this, Haley, because <laughs> every time I just have to hit enter on the screen. Okay, so firstly, I'd just like to talk about Integrity Systems Company, who I work for. Um, and into the general picture of the whole industry. So um, as dairy farmers, obviously you're part of this of these programs. Um, you're part, obviously part of your own dairy programs. They're very, very important about the end product that you sell, which is milk. And But you also, when your animals enter the red meat um, supply chain, then red meat industry. So that's, you know, what why we're here and we're talking about this because that's where you interact um, with the integrity system. So integrity systems company is is not that old. We've only been around since 2016, um, but we are a wholly owned subsidiary of Meat and Livestock Australia. And I just have that whole industry overview on the page because it just it is important that you sort of understand how decisions and, and policies and, and how the whole, whole thing operates. So the Red Meat Advisory Council is the peak council for Australian red meat. And then they provide direction to the, the peak um, separate councils for each of the, um, of the industries there. So we have the Lot Feeders Cattle Council of Australia, Goat Industry Council and Sheep Producers. And those um, high level or peak councils then provide the direction to Meat and Livestock Australia. So Meat and Livestock Australia obviously collect levies when livestock are sold and they also receive funding, matching funds from the government. And then they channel that funds according to, um, you know, those, the, the direction from those peak councils of where money needs to be spent. So um, that filters through to Integrity Systems Company and then we make the action what the policies um, that have been directed from all of those councils come down to us and we have to put that into practice. So having your input into that um, 
into that system generally comes through your state farming organisations or if you become part of the peak councils. And I imagine there's a fairly similar process for the dairy industry. So um, I think there's a, a few of you that are, are involved in some of those sort of um, organisations, how you know, all of those decisions gets ma get made. So Meat and Livestock Australia is our parent company and they are responsible for research development and adoption for Australian red meat. They also do a massive amount of marketing and they obviously have to collaborate with the Australian government and the wider red meat industry. And they have, you know, they're legislated to make sure that what they do and what they spend the funds on um, contribute to producer profitability, sustainability and global competitiveness. And then we sit underneath Meat and Livestock Australia as integrity systems company being responsible for the red meat integrity system. And as I said, that might just sound like, what are you talking about? It's, is it a new phrase? You know, what is, the, what is the system? What's it doing? So basically the system is there to ensure that all red meat produced by Australia is safe to eat and fully traceable. And we do that by providing a non-farm assurance program and animal identification and traceability from farms through to consumers. And this system does underpin the livestock. And it's really important because it gives confidence to um, buyers, retailers and consumers both here and around the world that they, um, you know, Australian red meat is a great product, it's safe and it, it's a good, um, a really good product to purchase. So um, as Hayley mentioned, we have um, the Department of Natural Resources and Environment Tasmania staff um, also on the webinar today, and they'll be um, presenting a couple of the slides. So I'm just gonna give a little bit of overview of the roles that they play. So they allocate and amalgamate your property identification codes, which we call PICs, which we'll also be talking in a, in a bit more detail about later. The department also authorizes um, producers to purchase um, and order NLIS tags. They approve um, manufacturers and merchandisers to verify and supply authorised uses with um, the analyzed tags, and they regulate the biosecurity requirements for producers. They also regulate the livestock movements on and off the NLIS database in Tasmania, and they are your point of contact for any regulatory specific questions. So please make sure that you know who they are and um, that you have their phone number and their contact details so that if you do have a question, you can get in contact. Now, I guess um, we really do want to emphasize why is this, this having an integrity system so important? And, you know, there's a, there's a whole lot of things that have happened of examples of that on the screen there um, of when things happen that need to be managed. Um, thankfully, instances um, are in Australia, but um, we need to have a system that manages, that allows us to manage the industry and allows us to manage that um, assurance that um, and the traceability so that if we, if there is an animal disease outbreak, if there is a, um, a food safety incident systems in place to be able to manage that. Uh, so what we do is, is through the system is provide that accountability right back to you guys because you are, and obviously there's other instances along the supply chain where you know food and um, product has an opportunity to be to be has to be managed but it does come right back to the farm and I guess um, you know all around the world there's there's different systems in place but um, Australia is quite lucky as a sort of a first world country and an island nation that we have just this one system that covers all of us um, and all of our product that then um, goes overseas and Australia does export around 70 percent of our red meat so it's um, you know things that happen on the world market are really have a really major impact on the Australian red meat industry. And I guess the key things I just wanted to point out is that the system protects industry prosperity, market access and advantage. And those things are really linked to our reputation for um, safe and high quality food. It does support premium prices um, and it does ensure that we have our reputation as a, a clean green supplier is, is. So look, there are multiple producers and you guys are part of the system, but we've got obviously red meat producers all over Australia with all different sized and kinds of operations, but everyone has that, um, 
responsibility to, to stand by what they sell and ensure that um, our product is safe. Sorry, I'm just having to use two computers to, to read my notes. So if, sorry if I'm looking away from the camera. Now, we did talk about some programs right at the start, at the um, start of the agenda. And unfortunately, our industry is very full of acronyms. So I'll try and um, reduce the, the times I use those acronyms. But there are two key programs that we manage, which is the on-farm assurance, which is Livestock Production Assurance Program, or LPA, and also the Identification and Traceability Program, which is the National Livestock Identification System. So those two key programs, probably for a lot of people, um, they've been seen as completely separate not really connected, just uh, you know, different compliance requirements. But those two programs are really, really are connected, um, and that's part of our big, I guess, sort of communication effort is to try and help people understand that LPA and NLIS are part of the one, the one system. So both of those programs, the on-farm assurance, managing what you do on farm and the traceability, how animals are tracked as they leave your farm and, and, and travel to sale yards or processes or to other farms. How, how is, what are the things that make those two programs work together? So the first thing is that having a property identification code. And I, I think um, explaining this has be, become easier since COVID because it's like, um, you know, in COVID we tracked people's movements because they signed into places where they went to. So it's like we need to have that identification code of where livestock are. So we need to know where they've been in their life, where they've traveled to, what other stock they've kind of come in contact with. So the property identification code is really important part of that. Um, and it is managed separately by each state and territory. So each state and territory have their own way of managing picks. Um, but through our system, they are all linked together nationally. So having um, Integrity Systems Company having a national pick register is the only way that it's all kept national. Otherwise, it's just a state based. So the records that you keep for livestock production assurance and the records you keep for your NLIS transfers are all part of what you need to keep for compliance. And they do, those are the records that underpin food safety and traceability. And I imagine that you also keep multiple records for dairy requirements as well. And some of them will overlap and in, we'll talk about that overlap and what, where you don't need to um, double up on keeping things for LPA and then exactly the same thing for your dairy requirements. If they're the same things, um, the LPA program recognises that so you don't have to keep double records of the same thing. Now, the very bottom is the LPA or the Livestock Production Assurance Program National Vendor Declarations or NBDs. And these documents or now they're moving to electronic documents, are the key that link LPA and NLIS together. Because when you sign or complete an NVD for when you're going to move livestock, you are making a declaration that all the livestock have been managed according to the requirements for the quality assurance program. And then you're making sure that that transfer is done in the NLIS database. So that is where you're linking traceability and um, product assurance or quality assurance. So what does LPA practically mean for you or livestock production insurance? What does it practically mean for you on farm when you're managing what you do with your animals? So once you sign up to be part of LPA, it does mean that you are committing to um, to, to do certain things. And that, as I just said, that's verified when you sign your national vendor declaration for livestock movements. You're, you're so basically making a statutory declaration that yes, I do all of these things. So I do a property risk assessment. So I make sure that there's nothing on my property that's going to um, contaminate my animals or um, make the food or the milk unsafe. I guess you're doing that for dairy. You're going to treat them responsibly and so that um, any treatments that you, you use are not going to contaminate the, the, the meat and you're going to do it in a safe manner with someone that's trained. You're going to manage all your fodder and all the stock foods and pasture 
So again, making sure that all the food that you purchase and grow is safe for them to consume and then the meat is safe for people to consume. You will make sure that when you um, transport animals that you have go through a preparation process that, that um, they're going to be um, in the best possible um, way they're going to be transported. So you, you have procedures for that. You are going to record all the transactions and all the movements on the NLIS database. So that is part of your LPA commitment that you will complete all your NLIS um, transactions and movements. You will make sure that you have a biosecurity plan um, and that you manage biosecurity risks. So if there was a some kind of animal disease outbreak that you have systems in place to make sure that you can manage that on your local level, on your farm level. And you, of course, will have procedures and training in place to ensure the highest quality of animal welfare. So they are the, the seven sort of areas that you make a commitment to when you're part of the Livestock Production Assurance Program. And NLIS, um, on farm, what does it mean for you? Well, it means that you identify all your livestock by a visual, well, for cattle, it has to be an electronic um, device. So um, for sheep and goats at the moment in Tasmania, I believe you can still use, um, as you can in all states apart from Victoria, you can still use visual devices, but for cattle, all cattle must be identified by an electronic um, ear tag or a roll, um, room and bolus, but I don't think there's too many. There's not, a, they're quite, limited in their use. Um, every physical location that livestock are on or move to are identified by a property identification code so that we know we can track the animal by their tag, we can track the destinations by the property identification code and that every movement is recorded in the NLIS database. So that's what the, the three big things are for on farm to, to manage. And then, as I said, the NVD is where the two programs come together. So the national vendor declaration that you complete, and there's some um, examples of the hard copy um, version. So the cattle version is the yellow version right in the front. And if you uh, have bobby calves, it's that sort of second last one, the dark green one, if you're um, transporting bobby calves. So those NVDs, um, are where you make all the declaration to say, yes, you're part of the program. You're making sure that there's no, you know, if there is any issues that they're identified on that, on that declaration. And then you make sure that you do the transfer um, in the NLIS database and that is the NVD and the, trans, the NLIS transfer are, are linked. So it does capture the food safety information on every animal every time it moves. And it does provide that evidence of your livestock history or what you do on farm when you transfer your livestock through the supply chain. So it really comes back, that signature that you sign, that's you saying that you guarantee that you've done the things that you need to do. And I'm sure there's similar things that you do with um, as part of the dairy program. So I might just um, pause here and um, if you've got some questions, please pop them into the um, into the Q and A um, section that Haley talked about before. So, yeah, and when the menu bar comes up, there's just a little section called Q and A. If you just click on that, you can type a question in there, and I think Haley might have a um, poll question. Ah, so I guess this is a pretty busy um, diagram. And we, if you see any of our communication material, we, we do use this diagram quite a bit. Um, and we have a video, a Stand By What You Sell little YouTube video that sort of pulls this um, diagram apart and talks about how all of those things fit in together to make up the integrity system. And you can see that say on the left, it's all about the livestock production assurance, so the things that you do on farm. And down the right, it's all about the National Livestock Identification System, which is all about the identification and traceability of livestock along the supply chain. So I guess the whole point of having this diagram is to really emphasise that those two programs are intimately connected. And the three key points of connection between them is having the property identification code, because both programs rely on that property identification code and your accounts or your um, being part of your of each program relies on you 
having a property identification code. They're both linked, as I said, through the national vendor declaration. So when national vendor de declaration and you do the transfer of those livestock in the NLIS database, you reference the national vendor declaration number and that links your, your guarantee or your declaration with the transfer. So it's all linked together for that group of animals as they move. And then your record keeping is is all connected. So when you are selected for an LPA audit, and we'll talk a bit more about, about those in a minute, AS records and transfers are definitely part of your LPA audit. So the two programs are just a part of the one system. So as I said, we're going to delve a little bit more deeply into each of those, um, of those acronyms. So hopefully you'll start to get um, a bit more familiar with them, but the PIC or the Property Identification Code is an eight character code allocated by your state or territory department. And you must have one to be able to move livestock um, from a, a property or a place. And it does form the basis of Australia's food and traceability program. And I guess the important thing to know is that within the NLIS, um, database, PICs can be assigned a status so that um, if there is an issue with a PIC, a food safety issue, a, um, a disease issue, um, a compliance issue, um, any kind of issue, then that PIC can be assigned a status. And that is how uh, regulatory authorities know um, what, you know, what's going on with different PICs. So I might hand over to Andrea now to talk about how PICs are managed in, in Tasmania. Thanks, Joe. Uh, in Tasmania, your property identification code starts with an M, and it, in the letters, the third and the fourth letter reflect on the municipalities. They f reflect on old municipalities. So we do also record the local government area beside these. So it reflects the new and the old um, requirements. Your property identification code is linked, um, it has your PID which has several titles underneath it. Um, the main PIC number is spatially identified on the list, which is a Tasmanian side to do with the properties and titles. When a property is consolidated, that main property will have be mapped to, but the additional properties will be simply linked by their PID and title references. Um, if you consolidate more than six or so, so properties, you'll need to contact us and we'll need to look at your reasoning why and um, which way is best to manage it for these sort of things. Um, prior to, you know, your first point of call is to register your PIC and make sure that it's all up to date with the state before you go and do your accreditation and update your details with the LPA and the NLI side of things, because we may get a request back um, asking, is this person registered, whether it be an owner, a share, farmer? And um, we may say no, if you haven't updated your details, so please do, so that way it's a nice smooth movement to the next step. Thanks, Jo. That is a great point, Andrea. Like, yes, as I said, the, the PIC registers are managed separately by each state and territory. So um, when you start talking to the integrity systems company customer service team about your LPA or your livestock production assurance and NLIS accounts, if you are not um, on the PIC register um, or not named there, then they can't help you until you are. So it is definitely your first port of call is to talk to your um, state um, authority. Now, apologies, because I did say it's not, we're trying to make it as simple as possible, but there have um, been some changes that in the short term may make your life a bit more complex, but they're designed to, in the long term, make your life a lot easier. So one of those things that has recently happened, so in June last year, or July last year, um, we moved to using MyMLA to access your um, integrity system accounts. So previously, as I said, and a lot of people in their mind, LPA and NLIS are two separate things in their mind, then they're completely separate programs. Well, as I've just been explaining, they're not. 
and to help people um, navigate and use and understand that they're what part of the same system, we're moving towards a single platform. Now we're not there yet, but to link everything together in the in the interim while we build this massive new platform that's going to link a lot of stuff for you, we are giving you the um, option or not the option for LPA, but we're giving you the 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 um, the way to be able to link everything together and just simplify it down to having one account, one username, one password. So if you haven't set up my MLA or you have no idea what I'm talking about, um, you really need to look into this and we'll provide you with some um, resources after the webinar because my MLA is now the only way you can access your livestock production insurance account. So it's really simple to set up an LP, a MyMLA account. Um, and we have a whole lot of resources, um, videos, flyers, um, web content. We've done a whole webinar on it and we've got a link to that. And once you've set up your MyMLA, you go through some steps linking your livestock production assurance account, your national um, livestock identification system account. If you're MSA accredited, your MSA account. And then you only have to remember that one username and password and you can log in and access all of your accounts in one place. So we're starting to move to that one platform. Um, so where you access everything that you need to in one place.